What are there controversies over the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam? The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is a significant dam on the Blue Nile River in Ethiopia under construction since 2011. Egypt currently bases its share of the river's waters on a colonial-era agreement of 1959 that gave it 55.5 billion cubic meters water annually, and Sudan 18.5 billion cubic meters. Other countries were not given allocations at that time. Ethiopia was not even party to the agreement and hence Ethiopia does not recognize it. Ethiopia is building the dam primarily for power generation. Power is not luxury, it is necessity. Electricity is important not just for lighting households, but also for investment and growth of a country. Stable electric power availability is one of the major determinants for foreign direct investment. Hence, aiming for and securing stable, an environment-friendly main source of electric power generation is vital for Ethiopia and its green economic development plan. The benefit of the dam is not only for Ethiopia, but Egypt and Sudan will also be huge beneficiaries. Actually, the benefit is for the whole of East Africa. I will come back to the benefits of the dam after giving you some striking facts about Ethiopia, Egypt and Sudan regarding access to electricity and basic drinking water. The data is obtained from World Bank database accessed on March 8, 2021. Looking at percentage of rural population that has access to electricity in 2018, Ethiopia, 32.65%, Egypt, 100%, and Sudan, 47.06%. Looking at percentage of the total population, both rural and urban combined, that has access to electricity in 2018, Ethiopia, 44.98%, Egypt, 100%, and Sudan, 59.78%. Looking at percentage of the total population that has access to clean fuels and technologies for cooking in 2015, Ethiopia, 3.51%, Egypt, 97.62%, and Sudan, 41.29%. Looking at percentage of the total population, both rural and urban combined, that are using at least basic drinking water services in 2017, Ethiopia, 41.06%, Egypt, 99.11% and Sudan, 60.27%. Looking at percentage of the rural population that are using at least basic drinking water services, in 2017, Ethiopia, 31.07%, Egypt, 98.82%, and Sudan, 53.2%. That means huge number of Ethiopians are living in poverty. So, has Ethiopia no right to use its natural resource to lift its population from poverty in a way that it does not hurt Egypt and Sudan? Isn't it all that Ethiopia wants? As I have already mentioned, 
The primary purpose of the dam is electricity production to relieve Ethiopia's acute energy shortage and for electricity export to neighboring countries. Now, we see few of the many benefits of the dam for Ethiopia, Egypt, or Sudan. The Benefits for Ethiopia It provides access to electricity for households and industries and help to promote green economic development and contributes to the fight against poverty and climate change. It benefits East Africa by filling the wide gap in electricity power shortage. More electrical power supply means less deforestation and less soil erosion, less pollution, and hence less adverse climate impact. Since the Blue Nile is a highly seasonal river, and its tributaries are very eroding as they come from mountains highlands of Ethiopia, the dam would reduce flooding and the enormous soil erosion within Ethiopia. Thus, contributes to environmental protection. It generates foreign exchanges for Ethiopia from green electricity exports to neighboring countries, and it contributes to the regional economic integration. What are the major benefits for Sudan and Egypt? By regularizing the river flow, it makes floods more manageable and less destructive. By catching the sediments, it hugely reduces the cost to remove sedimentation from their dams. It improves the navigation in downstreams by regularizing the water flow and removing the fear of sudden overflooding. The dam's reservoir can serve as a buffer water supply in times of drought. The water bank for Egypt and Sudan. What are the current points of high dispute? Egypt wants the first two-year stage of the filling process to be extendable, and for Ethiopia to guarantee it 40 billion cubic meters per year after the first stage is completed. Ethiopia says Egypt is trying to hold the project hostage by imposing rules over the filling and operation of the dam. So, finally, everything boils down to who is controlling the dam. What do you say? I would like to hear your from you. I believe that mutual understanding, cooperation, and civilized negotiation is the way forward. Isn't it? Please do not forget sharing this video and be voice for fairness. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to push the like button and subscribe to our channel. If you have any comment or question, please let us know by leaving comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching.